Have you ever thought about going on a solo trip but you were a little worried about what could happen? Well, today we're only gonna reinforce those fears. Sorry. Ever hear about John Reed, Judy Smith, Cameron Remmer? Crazy stories. Let's get into it. So in May of the year 2000, New York-based travel writers Claudia Kirschlock and Tanya Grossinger were traveling to Havana, Cuba on a business trip, but found the trip suddenly canceled during their layover in Jamaica. Now well disappointed, they were determined to make the most of it. So at a resort, Claudia made friends with Anthony Grant, one of the resort's bartenders, and she was a big fan of reggae music, and Anthony reportedly offered to take her to a nearby club to just have some fun. Now Tanya managed to book a flight home and agreed to meet up with Claudia when they were both back in New York City. Now a life guard was reportedly the last person to see Claudia live the next afternoon, when she was walking on a local beach away from the resort. Now on June 2nd, her parents were notified because she hadn't shown up for work in New York, so they contacted the resort in Jamaica. Now by this point, hotel maids had reported Claudia missing after noticing she had not slept in her bed for several days, but all of her belongings were still in her room. I'm talking her passport credit cards, cell phone, almost $200 in cash were recovered from the hotel safe where she had left them. Now Claudia's mom Mary told the press that she was a very organized person. She would have brought her belongings with her had she planned any sort of excursion or variance in her trip. So as soon as they found out their daughter was missing, Claudia's parents were on the next plane. But their attempts to find out what happened to their daughter hit one dead end after another after another, all beginning at the resort where she had been staying. So as a security precaution, the license plates of all vehicles entering and leaving the resort are carefully logged in a logbook, which is great. But oh so conveniently, the logbook for the month that Claudia disappeared was missing. Then a videotape from a surveillance camera mounted near her room had been recorded over. Finally, the room where she stayed was cleared by housekeeping and security before it could be processed for clues. Hmm. Well, that's uh, a lot of quinky dinks. No Little sus. Now, frustrated by the progress of the investigation, Claudia's parents brought in the FBI and an American search and rescue team. And according to a canine handler on the case, his dog tracked her scent to the home of Anthony Grant that bartender that I mentioned a moment ago. At Anthony's home, the dog got a hit on a pair of boots, a pair of gloves, and a weapon. Oh, and it found Claudia sent in the trunk and backseat of Anthony's car. Now, Anthony was investigated and polygraphed, but the results were inconclusive. And the FBI stated they interviewed him for several weeks, but they didn't consider him a suspect. Now, the family has struggled to keep the search for Claudia alive, despite dwindling leads, diminishing support, but there's still a $50,000 reward for answers. I'm just hoping they get answers someday. In the year 1980, 28-year-old John Reed left his hometown of Twin Cities, California and traveled to Brazil. He was hoping to find the lost city of Akakor, an ancient underground civilization which had supposedly remained undiscovered in the Amazonian jungles for like thousands of years. Now he had learned about the city in a book. Now the author of said book, Carl Brugger, had written it after learning about Akakor from a Brazilian jungle guy named Tatunka Nara, who claimed he had once been chief of a tribe which ruled the city like 3,000 years prior. He said he was born in the jungle near the border with Peru and he actually served as a guide for an elaborate expedition mounted by Jacques Cousteau, yeah, the famous French explorer scientist. Guys lived a couple of lifetimes. Now, Tatunka lived in the village of Barcelos and ran a lucrative business leading tourists into the jungle to search for the missing city. Few who went in the wilds with Tatunka actually believe the story of Akakor. It merely just added another layer of, you know, fun to the adventure of a lifetime. But for folks like John, the tale touched deeper courts, and um, he decided to accompany Tadunka on one of these expeditions. He left his dog tags and returned plane ticket in his hotel room, but never came back. Now, Tadunka always claimed that he ran off and hid in the jungle after they decided to return to the city. However, Reed was not the only person to disappear under suspicious circumstances in Tadunka's company. During the 1980s, a Swiss man named Herbert Weiner and a Swedish woman named Christine Huser would also mysteriously vanish during an expedition. All we found was uh, uh, Herbert's jawbone. In addition, Carl Brugger would meet his end too soon on a Rio Street in 1984, and authorities have always believed that Gunther Hook was uh, responsible for his killing and three disappearances. But there's never been enough evidence to charge him. Oh right, I'm getting ahead of myself here. You have no idea who Gunther is. Well, it was actually revealed that Tatunka was a German citizen named Gunther. The police have his birth certificate and other personal records, and they studied photographs of him, like old photographs, and they're like, yeah, that's that's you. Police records show that uh, Gunther was a sailor on a West German freighter in 1966 when he jumped ship in Venezuela and arrested, he claimed to be an Indian. Now, a psychiatrist diagnosed him as schizophrenic and then he was returned to West Germany where he was jailed for three months for failing to support his wife and two sons. Now, three years later, Gunther sailed to Brazil and again, jumped ship, according to the police. And this time, well, he disappeared and miraculously, the Duncanara emerged. 
So going back to John, poor guy, his sister Sandy actually traveled to the Amazon around 1990 with a German filmmaker and a Times reporter to try and get some answers for herself about his disappearance. But um, they got nothing. It's still unknown to this day. In 1997, Judy Smith was a 50 year old mother of two from Newton, Massachusetts. She had recently gotten married to her attorney husband, Jeffrey, and decided to fly to Philadelphia to join him on a business trip. So I believe it was April 10th, Jeffrey was attending a conference. So Judy was like, I'll go sightseeing in the city. I'll have fun. Well, she never returned to the hotel that night. So obviously, Jeffrey's going to report her missing. And it would be about five months before, well, they found her, kind of. On September 7th, hikers came across her decomposed, partially buried remains in an isolated mountain area. But um, here's the thing. Here's why it's baffling. Judy's remains were found over 960 kilometers away in North Carolina. And nobody knows what happened to her. So authorities concluded that she was likely a victim of foul play. But since she still had her wedding ring, $167 in her possession, robbery wasn't a motive. And even though she normally carried her belongings in a red backpack, a blue one was found to the scene. And to make things even stranger, there were indications that Judy had traveled to the area voluntarily, seeing as four witnesses had seen her in nearby areas. All indications pointed to Judy being in a friendly mood. And a witness who spoke with her said she mentioned her husband was an attorney. So if the woman that witnesses spoke to was indeed Judy Smith, no one knows why she felt compelled to run off without telling her family. And if she chose to disappear on her own, how did she wind up on a remote mountain? So even though he was 86 years old at the time, Leo Whitaker still lived a very active life. He had been married to his wife Virginia for 55 years. They both belonged to a Christian organization called Maranatha Volunteers International. And by 2001, the Whitakers had worked with Maranatha on 40 humanitarian trips. For their 41st trip, the couple left their home in North Dakota to accompany the organization to Tabacon Hot Springs in Costa Rica. So on November 8th, Leo rested on a bench while his wife went off to wade in the hot springs. And when Virginia returned about a half an hour later, her husband was gone. It's theorized that Leo may have fallen asleep on the bench and become disoriented after waking up, but before he disappeared, Leo had been seen asking people if they knew where his wife was. He walked to the resort gate, asked the guards if it was okay to leave, so they opened the gate and watched him walk off down the main road. Only 15 minutes later, one of Leo's friends drove that same stretch of road for 10 straight miles, but didn't see any sign of him. Since Leo didn't move very fast, there were really only a few places he could have gone, so the only logical explanation was that someone might have picked him up. However, an extensive search of the area turned up no trace of Leo, and he's never been found. And finally for today, on September 29th of 2011, 29-year-old Cameron Remmer left his home in California for a business trip to San Francisco and checked into the Fairmont Hotel with plans to remain in the city for a month in hopes of expanding his um, medical MJ business. Now, on the evening of October 6th, one of his buddies in Arizona received a strange phone call from him, asking for money to pay for a room. And when the friend agreed to the request, Cameron suddenly changed his mind, said he found a place to stay. Turns out Cameron was drinking heavily at the Fairmont that night, and the hotel was like, yeah, get the heck out of here. But before he left, Cameron checked his bags with the hotel, claimed he would return to pick them up later. And he stayed true to his word, returning three days later, incoherent and very disoriented, wearing a completely different shoe on each foot. Now, he was able to get into his former room without retrieving his bags, and that was the last anybody ever saw of him. After Cameron was reported missing, his bags were finally opened to reveal over 60 vials of um, MJ, along with $30,000 in cash. Now, there have since been numerous unconfirmed sightings of a disheveled Cameron wandering around San Francisco, leading to speculation that he suffered a bit of a break and is now a homeless transient. But I wonder, could his disappearance be connected to the large quantity of fun stuff and cash he had with him? Until he's found, we're never gonna know. And that's the end of our time once again, folks. I've been Alexa, resident ooky spooky girly. See y'all next time, you love the spooky people.